Norbert Niesner is Shared Technologies at SCS. And um, let me put to you, um, as part of the SCS portfolio, besides mechanical recycling, um, we have the chemical recycling technology depolymerization, which is already quite developed. Um, Norbert, in which way is depolymerization and polystyrene a perfect marriage? Take it away with that, Norbert. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Chrissy, for your kind introduction and happy to be in this um, circle of speakers. Um, let me take you to the first slide and um, add and echo what uh, what Herman said in his uh, last passage of his presentation. Um, we all know and we all knew about the properties of polystyrene, but we redetected them uh, again in a very positive sense when we developed recycling concepts. And uh, um, polystyrene, just to recap, is uh, stable. You can um, say that uh, we do not sacrifice properties when we recycle polystyrene. Um, <clears throat> polystyrene is well proven over decades actually in, in food contact and therefore nearly uh, infinite recycling cycles are, are, are possible actually. Um, and that has to do with the, with, with the sorting, which is uh, uh, written on the, on the right page. Uh, you have already seen that um, polystyrene is um, somewhat excellent for sorting. So the detection technology near infrared is perfectly suited to sort out polystyrene uh, from, from other plastics. And uh, therefore, that's a prerequisite for a, for a successful recycling over more or less endless cycles. And on the right side, on the left side, you see um, the recycle uh, circle. This means that uh, polystyrene is actually, um, uh, due to its intrinsic properties, made for re recycling. Um, and we we heard about the mechanical recycling, but we will now hear about the depolymerization. And I will show you why uh, polystyrene is unique here as well. In order to get an overview, please uh, have a look at the um, portfolio of polystyrene plastic to plastic recycling technologies. So basically, um, we, we, we heard from, from, from Herman already that uh, if we have um, uh, well um, sorted and, and highly sorted material, uh, we can with this mechanical recycling um, including a certain treatment, we can uh, recap basically, or we can uh, reproduce uh, food grade quality. And depending on the on the quality, which you see on the right side, there are different solutions out there. So um, for mixed plastics, this is an I would say a global initiative by many uh, big chemical uh, companies to use mixed plastics, <clears throat> which is um, 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 today, an important fraction of the uh, of the recycling and sorting process to use them into feedstock recycling, right? So that means also thorough purification, elimination of uh, catalyst uh, um, poisons, and uh, and uh, heat uh, heating about 600 centigrades. So um, something which is done already, yeah, in the industry, which is uh, done over decades already. And uh, this route uh, provides um, uh, the excess of uh, small molecules via this high temperature treatment of uh, mixed plastics, including polystyrene or also, as the name says, other plastics as well. Then if we boil down to polystyrene from mixed plastics, then we have um, the depolymerization. And here the clue is really <clears throat> that um, polystyrene is one of the few polymers having a benign so-called ceiling temperature. What does that mean? It means that at, um, at a temperature of slightly below 400 centigrades, we can depolymerize polystyrene straight into styrene. Uh, of course, depending on the, on the uh, conditions, we create byproducts, that's clear. We have to, 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 to clean that up, to distill it. But basically then, uh, we can create exactly the same, um, let's say, purity as if we would, uh, let's say, buy on the market um, fossil-based styrene. Yeah? So we have demonstrated that, and therefore 
that is a really interesting route for polymers like polystyrene, which have um, this ceiling temperature in an in a yeah in a benign range. Um, and then we also have um, other other properties like uh, or other other recycling schemes. Uh, food contact we had already that's in the middle. Uh, dissolution is something we are looking into uh, as well as an as a working group within SCS. Um, dissolution is of particular interest uh, for um, let's say well sorted waste um, uh, which uh, is purified without. Uh, disintegrating the polymer. That means we purify it by, uh, by dissoluting or by dissolving it into a solvent and by re-precipitating it. Um, and therefore, this cleaning step uh, provides uh, another route uh, to, uh, towards a high quality uh, material. And uh, yeah, last but not least, uh, needless to say that, um, let's say the um, um, routes that we have investigated seem to show low energy and low CO2 footprint. Uh, we will hear uh, from Regino Weber a bit more about that, um, but uh, we are looking into that as well. And uh, therefore you see here more or less a holistic picture of, let's say the technology <clears throat> pool that opens up uh, today for the future. So there's no one size fits all. We have many options addressing the different qualities of the sorted or unsorted waste and that gives especially polystyrene a bright future so the um, um addressing the uh, what 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 chrissy mentioned the perfect marriage of technology and material why is that in the case of polystyrene um as i mentioned it's um, given by nature that uh, polystyrene can most easily be reversed into its uh, original monomer styrene uh, of course, with byproducts, and they uh, can be purified. Um, that means we have one monomer. It's efficient. We have high yields. Um, the monomer is a liquid. It can be purified by distillation. Um, the depolymerization works with post-consumer waste, post-commercial waste, post-industrial waste, um, and uh, it is pretty stable. It is uh, pretty benign and robust versus uh, certain impurities. So for example, we have tested polyolefin impurities, PE and PP, up to 10 or even higher than 10%. No problem, no, process is robust. And even impurities where we say, yeah, that could be, could be a challenge, still pretty robust, up to 1% of impurities. So um, a process that, uh, that uh, proposes or, or that, that promises a low level of complexity um, and um, let's say a, a, a robust behavior regarding lot to lot inconsistencies which you will have <clears throat> when you collect uh, recycled materials and here again a bit uh, for the for the uh, chemistry aficionados uh, amongst you so it's a the polystyrene depolymerization works like opening a zipper um, you have the, the chain, which is the zipper, and you open it up by, by thermal treatment, by heat, and you depolymerize it into styrene, mainly. Yeah? And this styrene, after purification, is then uh, used back into polymerization. So a true recycling. Temperatures, as I mentioned, um, starts at, at about 300 centigrades, process temperatures at about 500. So pretty moderate, easy in principle to, to control by given technological means. Um, picking up the slides you, you have seen before, um, by, this, um, um, by, by this unique process, um, we will return to the styrene monomer with high yield and purity. So today we are talking about depending on the process, about 70% um, up to 80-ish yeah, are in view. And I can tell you as researcher, this will not be the end, yeah, but we, we might come to that later. Um, the recycled styrene has um, same quality as, as virgin styrene. That means we have high, high um, requirements on virgin styrene. The ASTM 
um, standard, for example, for virgin styrene says 99.8 purity. And I can confirm we have received uh, that after our, our, our processes, our, also our distillation processes. This, that means same quality. And we were able to, to create polystyrene out of it. So we put it to the test. Uh, it polymerizes to polystyrene. And, um, and that can be done a few times, yeah? not only once, twice, three times, so over and over again. Of course, it's not a natural process with 100.0%, but we are, as I mentioned, working on this um, yield question. Um, the um, um, depolymerization uh, results, as I mentioned, um, can be, uh, or we, we can add that um, um, based on this high quality, uh, we don't see in the moment any limitations in applications. Because uh, let's say the old perception, let's say former time perception on classical, uh, let's say recycling is, it's more or less a downcycling. So you create whatever bottles and then maybe fibers and then comes, well, uh, you know, you, you go a bit down. But uh, this is, uh, here we don't see that case. We see no limitations. We see uh, that due to the high purity we fulfill, uh, or we are going to fulfill the consumer uh, safety regulations. And uh, in the moment, we we don't we don't see any difference uh, in the in the in the in the purif uh, in the purification versus the um, uh, fossil-based styrene. And um, yeah, maybe we can mention that last year. Um, um, there was an ISIS award um, for um, Ineos Star Revolution on having first, firstly demonstrated to repolymerize styrene into polystyrene. And I might uh, disclose today, we uh, all, this did not uh, proceed only by radical polymerization, which is the industrial standard, but also by anionic polymerization, which requires a super high purity. So also that worked. That means um, all indications show we are on the on the right path towards um, virgin-like uh, recycled styrene quality. Yeah, then uh, maybe your um, uh, the last point you might ask about the technological readiness level uh, of the depolymerization. I think this is um, despite the fact that we are really um, having here a new technology. Um, I think we can check this box. So, because several companies like Agilix and Pyrowave um, have processes on the market for polystyrene depolymerization, um, there are plants in operation uh, in the US, and um, um, there were several announcements, for example, one of Ineos Star Revolution and Transia to advance plans to build um, such a depolymerization uh, plant in France uh, as well. Um, and that uh, is planned to be uh, fully operational by 2023. So um, um, this is just an example showing you that this is a very, very dynamic field and plastic to plastic depolymerization capacity implementation is underway. Thank you. So that, uh, Thank you was my contribution. Thanks uh, and open for questions. Thank you, Norbert. I do have a question for you. I mean, you have now sh shown us that, or made a very um, strong case that depolymerization and uh, polystyrene is particularly advantageous for depolymerization as it can be unzipped back to the original form. And from there, um, it makes um, recycled polystyrene from depolymerization a great option to go to food contact. All right. Um, what do you say to those that have doubts about chemical recycling in general? Yeah, what do you say from the depolymerization perspective? You said technological readiness level, you've already refuted doubts, um, we are there. Um, but what about economic viability for depolymerization? Yeah, thanks, Chrissy. I think this is a very valid, uh, valid question, but uh, to be um, um, at mostly open here, I I personally believe, and I think uh, I speak for the whole working group, that um, this polymerization, despite um, you know being being implemented in the moment in the market, has a great um, 
uh, perspective, not only ecologically, but also economically. And why is that? Because we are, we are speaking, uh, as, uh, as you have heard, about 70 to 80 percent yield, which we receive in two days um, um, operations um, on lab plan scale. And um, let's say I know from, from, from own work, that this is not the end. And uh, clearly, I don't think I, I spread secrets now. Clearly, the target is to go up this ladder. And uh, the option is definitely there. The more you control the reaction conditions, like residence time, like temperature, especially, uh, plus in combination with the feedstock, the, the better you go up in, in, in that way. And uh, there is no, in the moment, no limit inside. But imagine we go, we cross maybe the 90% range, um, then the question is, do we need a very, how to say, um, a detailed uh, separation distillation process or can we make it easy? One easy step yeah? or maybe no, in, in future, no separation, no distillation at all. Yeah? So the development clearly goes into, you know, reducing complexity, reducing the cost for purification. And then if you have that, then you can almost calculate yourself. You take the price of the raw material, you take the typical utility cost of a plant. Every one of us knows this is pretty limited. And then you have the cash cost of the process and that becomes very, very interesting. Yeah. So I think we are on a, on a competitive way, even despite the fact that we are, have just uh, started. Yeah. I think we are, let's say, further than many of, many of us think. So I'm very positive in that. Excellent. So that means a lot of upside potential or even further upside potential to look right. up to with the scaling up.